can't be on a, 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 a conversation that's not brand safe, or maybe there's comments that aren't brand safe, and, and this disinformation will be blamed for it. So they've screwed the pooch themselves. Ironically, <laughs> it's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best part, is the irony. Yes. And with yeah. that, I'd like to thank you for your courage and say in the morning to you, the man who put the sea in enhanced counter drug measures, John C. Dvorak. Well, in the morning to you, Mr. Adam Curry. Also in the morning, all ships of sea boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs on the water, and all the dames and knights out there. A hearty and large and well meant in the morning to our troll room, noagendastream.com. Quick little troll counts. Troll count now is, whoa, hello, trolls, 1,681. Not the record, but we've had a lot of people checking in live. Uh, we do the show live on Thursdays and Sundays at uh, uh, 12 Eastern, just to make it easy for everybody, 11 a.m. here in the beautiful uh, Republic of Texas. And uh, you can witness that by going to noagendastream.com. That's up 24-7. You can listen to the stream. You can get in the troll room, troll around, do whatever you want to do, make fun of people, learn something, meet new children from other lands, and also sample some of the best podcasts, all based on the value-for-value value mo uh, model. There is no commercials. It's uh, a lot of good fun with good people. Noagendastream.com. Remember, we have noagendasocial.com right now. Uh, which is not, we've had it for two years, but it's very important if you want to share information and not be blocked by a algorithms and artificial intelligence. If you have something that you actually want to share, there's a good place to do it because no algos run, nothing's deleted, no one's blocked. And you can also communicate with anybody at noagendasocial.com. I'm Adam at noagendasocial.com um, through any federated website. So you can do it from uh, mastodon.social from gab.com anywhere you want it's the federated model and we like it a lot and also uh, in the morning to our artists for episode uh, 1229 1229 episodes the title of that uh, was orange tongue and we reused this is a rare one but we reused the album art that I had used to tweet the bat signal by skip Actually, logic it was variation one. It was a different variation, but it still had the uh, the show title in the number. So it's a gas pump that shows a dollar twenty two and ninety cents. It has no agenda in the. I guess that would be is that Exxon colors or is that? Uh, no, it's mobile. Mobile colors, yes. Live from Gitmo Nation. Beautiful piece done by Skip Logic. Who has Skip Logic done some? Yeah, Skip Logic's done some other stuff for us. I think we've used. Well, maybe we haven't used any of it. We almost used one, and I think one did become a T-shirt. That's the Globe one, I believe. But he yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yes. The sorry, we're closed. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was a good one, but it never really made our art, but it did make uh, the shop's art. Yes. Um, and and so, he was. He sent a note around thanking us profusely. Yeah, and and obviously we wanted to point out that this was a piece of art. Typically, the rule is don't put the show number on it. But this was such a creative use of the show number that we felt it was okay because it was the gas station price pump. Yeah, and it was the best piece, it, mainly. I think it all. Uh, did we look at something else? There's a lot of, uh, let's see, the drone, Nick the Rat, Citizen drone. Just wasn't quite that pretty. I didn't, you used the no agenda, do not resuscitate in the newsletter. I'm happy you did that. I just, I vetoed that one because it felt like Look too much like NBC. I don't want people to look at it and gl glance away. <laughs> Thinking that's NBC. I don't want to listen to that. That was my Next time, my have the dead birds have some smoke coming off. Like, <laughs> <a little laughs> that something. would help. That would help. Noagendaartgenerator.com. That's where you can uh, look at all of the art that's made. It's where you can upload things. Uh, lots of this art, as you heard, makes it onto T-shirts, mugs, caps, clothing, hoodies. Uh, Noagendashop.com, which uh, supports the artists, the shop, and the show. And above all, it's just fun to look at all the great stuff people come up with. NoAgendaArtGenerator.com. As part of a value-for-value value model, we like to thank the people who support the show at high levels in the beginning of the broadcast. That's what we call our executive producers and associate executive producers. And we're going to thank them now. Yes, starting with our, our uh, 
un- he's obviously a grand duke by now, but he doesn't take credit for anything other than his own title that he's decided to be Sir Anonymous of Dogpatch and Lower Slobovia. Oh, Dogpatch is back. And he actually sent cash. What, like dollar bills? No, not quite dollar bills, but it was a gift. It was cash. Wow. High denomination bills, let's put it that way, of $2,000.99. Yeah. Wow. And so uh, so that was welcome. And tell we me, tell me he has this. a note. No note. No, he's got a note. He's got a note. Uh, he says, uh, Sir Anonymous, a dark patch in Lorsa Loba, your bargain basement donation filled with all kinds of germs. <laughs> Get it? E- Cash, yes. Germs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank all your producers uh, that add so much to the information and entertainment of the critical service of this critical service during a pandemic. Sadie Hawkins Day was again successful here in Dog Patch. <laughs> Women in burkas were uh, were slower, but they used a pre-event dinner with much alcohol and food to successfully slow many of the uh, of the men. Did we miss Sadie Hawkins Day? Well, yes, I guess we did. Yeah, well, he caught it somewhere in, uh, I don't know where, but the was toilet the, I'm guessing the Middle East somewhere mm. where they drink. Now, the number of countries that drink that are Muslim countries, Indonesia's one of them, Turkey's one of them. The Middle East itself technically doesn't drink, but they but they kind of drink, but they can't drink if they're wearing their traditional uh, costume. So they can only or, drink if they're naked? Well, here's the, I'll, you, if you want the story, I was, I'm in uh, with a Saudi prince. Okay, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Set, set the stage. Okay, so this is 80s, 90s. You're on, you're on the Saudi prince's jet. No, oh. I'm not on anybody's jet. Oh. I'm in Dubai. <laughs> and we're opening a, a PC magazine, Middle East, is a magazine okay, rollout. Okay, all right. So, okay, so you're, you're doing biz in the Middle East. And so there's this one, this one guy, nice guy, Saudi prince, one of the was Saudi royal family, not a, not a prince, royal family, royal family member. So he's only a millionaire. I don't know. He could be a billionaire for all I know. <laughs> all I know is he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. And I've run into these guys before, and they, they're very distinctive. They have a certain... They're charming. Uh, they have charm. Certain, yeah, they always wear expensive watches. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's a bar in this hotel, and I, he says, you want to go have a drink? Oh, he's hitting on you. No, he just wanted to sit down and have a drink. Oh. And uh, I said, you, uh, you, I didn't think you guys could go have a drink in these bars. You, you know, I'm just saying. And he says, oh, oh, yeah, well, no, you can't if you're wearing this, this outfit. I'll be right back. I'll be down in, t- in five minutes. <laughs> Wait, so he was wearing his white outfit with the, with the yeah, headbands? Yeah, his dish dash, as they call it. His dish dash? Yeah, he's wearing that. And he he's comes down. He comes down. He's got a pair of sunglasses on. His, ah. his turban's gone. He's got an <laughs> ACDC T-shirt on. And he's wearing Good jeans. Good to go. We can drink. <laughs> and now it's okay to drink. Did he have brown shoes on? I didn't notice. Okay. No, tennis shoes. He was wearing oh, tennis okay. shoes. All Nikes. Right. All right, all right. So I did notice. Anyway, so that's so there's some issues there like that people don't understand fully understand anyway. Anyway, so dog power. So uh, sounds uh, like a loophole to me. I totally a loophole. <laughs> so Animus is going on about the uh, women getting them in uh, drunk so they could chase them down. Pre race discussion of how covering up your face in public, washing five times a day, no handshakes, and canceling all concerts. Concerts is a successful transfer of extremist Islamic, Islamic. culture to the rest of the world. <laughs> I just considered that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Damn Taliban. Taliban. <laughs> Orange. Best comment was how many prefer a magazine of hollow points and open carry to uh, Encourage social distancing. The Kalishnikov was noted as having a superior social distancing distancing <laughs> benefit. <laughs> uh, dog patch. It's only once a month, but I do love it when you when you write to us. Air travel is easier than ever. No lines and almost 
and almost like it's almost like taking a private jet. <laughs> Pre check for everyone. I encourage all no no agenda listeners to buy from whatever businesses are open, including drive in or take out restaurants. <laughs> buy partial tanks of gla- gas to refill more frequently, and if you are not risking other family members, volunteer at soup kitchens or look for other opportunities to help those that are less able in person or less able as in-person volunteerism has really dropped. Yeah. It, well, there's, there's some problems as well as, um, you know, we do a lot for the Ronald McDonald House, of course, and I was happy to go and volunteer. No. No, there's only one person at a time from because the offices and everything is in the house. Um, so the limited personnel, because, you know, we have sick people coming in, coming out. People went to the hospital. People go from there to the hospital. Children running around. It's very difficult. So they, you know, they they used to have every day there would be groups coming in cooking, usually you know an office or some social club, and and so that's kind of scheduled on an ongoing basis, and that had to stop immediately. So now people have to, you know, send money, buy food, has to be delivered. It's a, it's 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 a problem to even volunteer. Is what I'm saying. He continues, conspiracy or not, just another flu or not, it can make you very sick for a while and is causing short-term overloads in the healthcare system. Panic is the biggest issue to look for. <clears throat> Panic is the bi- biz- oh, Come on, John. Panic is the biggest issue. So look for a reasonable way to help others. In yes. our third world charity, we are giving big bags of food to old couples with the condition that we will only give more food the next week if the parents are still there. Uh, we hope it will keep uh, the parents, make the parents live longer. Anyway, mm-hmm. so he's part of some organization doing that. Uh, NJNK, as usual. And uh, we want to thank him for supporting this show. Yeah, thank you. In a big way. Sir, Anim- Sir Anonymous of Dogpatch in Lower Slobovia, one of the top supporters, refuses titles. We don't know much about him other than we always look forward. Well, of course, his support is un, un, almost unparalleled, but his notes are always inquisitive, interesting, and well thought out. And uh, I put the money through a gamma radiation machine, which I have in the back room. So we're all good. So that should be fine. Okay, good. Uh, onward. Sir, is it Serena? You think Serena? I think Serena. Katina? Yeah, Serena. Serena right. Katina. Yeah. Catania, 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 yeah, yeah. Carlisle, Pennsylvania, $530. Oh. And just a note, there's nothing like a dame, and I'm assuming that that's a request. There is nothing like a dame. Yes, nothing like a now, dame. Uh, I don't think she's, she's a dame. She's on, no, she's on her way. According to Eric, she has uh, a very small amount of money to go. So she's close. Okay. Jeffrey Sackett in St. Joseph, Michigan, 333. Uh, thank you for your courage. Thank, Another nice yeah, short note. Thank you for your courage. Yeah, we like the shorties. And thank you for your short note. Yes. yes. Uh, Fawaj El Du. Duaj, Duaj, fa- 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 I would say Raj, Duaj. I would say Fawaz. Fa- well, he's in Kuwait. Fawa- Fawaz Al Duaj, Duaj, something like Baby. that. Shit, I should learn. Well, isolation is desolation. He says. Uh, I ask God to let me plant kisses on cheeks of friends and family. Jingle, stop the hammering. Say hello to my little friend. And anything in English by an Arab leader, current <laughs> or former. Wait a minute. Stop the hammering is easy. I don't think we have a say hello to my little friend. No, we don't. That came from the Al Pacino movie. Yeah. We probably should have it. It's like every podcast in the world say uses that. My little friend. There you there go. All right. All right. So you'll do that part. And uh, then so I can do stop the hammering. You do say hello to my little friend. And then anything in English by an Arab leader, current or former. Do we even have that? Probably have tons of it, but... Well, who would be an Arab leader that we'd have something from? Well, uh, I don't know. 
I don't know offhand. I'll, I'll just do this, okay? And we'll, then we'll throw some carnage. Oh, that's good. It. We'll just go all the yeah. way with. Yeah, we'll one. just, we'll just, we'll just. I mean, we got to do something, right? Stop the hammering. Say hello to my little friend. Yes, we have everything you want, including all of the oil for you here in Saudi Arabia. You've got karma. Worst. That was the worst. <laughs> No, was, no, no. I tell you, it was, it was not the worst. <laughs> it was up there, but it was not the worst. Okay. A uh, dude named dude named Sven in uh, your neck of the woods. He's in Austin, Texas. He came in with $333. He sent a note in, a couple of notes, actually. Oh, okay. Are you grabbing the mail? I No, I don't have to. I already found oh. it. I, did my, I actually did some pre-show work today. Oh, I, I did some, that whole... I did pre-show work yesterday. I wrote that whole four four theories. See, it, I, think, I think you actually had five in there, to be honest about it. Uh, Thank you again for this service, he writes. On my 33rd year, oh, this is probably a birthday or something. On my mm-hmm. 33rd year, my wife and I are fortunate enough to be expecting our first child. Please send karma to my wife. She's a wonderful person, smoking hot, mm-hmm. building another human being from scratch. <laughs> And has a very stress, stressful job. From scratch? Oh, my God. That. That's absolutely true. Enhanced She's human resource human creation. From scratch. That's great. What well, talent, man. Talent. My hope is that karma aimed at her person both bathes her and transfers directly to the baby as well. Were it not for the pregnancy, I don't think either one of us would be too concerned about the virus, thanks in no small part to your deconstructions. However... It is con- it is concerning while we're having we're in this condition. So far, there is mention of limited data from Wuhan, where nine pregnant women who contracted COVID during their third trimester ended. Uh, it ended up having help with healthy babies, and the mothers went yeah. on to be yes. fine. The yes. CDC does doesn't have any real information on the subject, although they remind you that the influenza can cause a preterm. Birth, which can have lasting development effects on the child. From friends in the medical field, it sounds like the greatest threat that COVID poses during the pregnancy or birth is by being transferred to a newborn from an infected parent, in which case they speculate it would be required that the parent would have to be quarantined from the newborn for several weeks. Well, it's surely better than the alternative. Uh, That might be very difficult to cope with as well. Anyways, going on. Uh, Last thing is a reminder to everyone who has to call in to customer service lines. The people feeling these calls from customers do not write the uh, right, do not write the frustrating company policies that they are reading. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's stressful on them to take verbal abuse and it's truly abuse. I've seen what it can do to them. Yeah. Well, that's right. Don't start yelling at a customer service person. No, oh, people are people are going nuts. We will talk about that. This I think it's called uh, anticipatory anxiety. It's very destructive. Yeah. And you're just waiting I, for something to happen. You know, you're waiting. You don't know exactly. You don't even know what it is. What are we waiting for? Some signal that all's clear, all's good, or we're all going to die. It's very pain. People are flipping out. Flip it out. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're flipping out. But dude named Sven, uh, congratulations. And, yeah. And he doesn't have any other requests for jingles or anything such as but that. He does want some uh, perfect human resource but karma. Go with the karma for the baby, for sure. And thank you for contributing to the much needed babies in the United States so we don't become Japan. Thank you. You've got karma. Yes. Thanks for contributing to the babies. Uh, Sir J.D., Baron of Silicon Valley, or in his case, Sycon Val, <laughs> a 321-18, he's in San Jose. Uh, gents, a communication from the Baron. Yep. Physically distancing himself from J.C.D. and the other no-agenda folks in our nine Bay Area counties sheltering in place during this the, the uh, extended corona quarantine government order. <clears throat> More on that later, but for today, I need a happy birthday call out, and I think he's on the list, mm-hmm. and some goat cook scream, you might die, that's true. Uh, karma for our human resource, Dame Fee Non Emus, Fee Non Emus, he's got a pronunciation there, whose birthday countdown is encoded in this donation. 
Yeah. She must pass the important milestone quarantine and shelter in place with her parental <laughs> units instead of our <laughs> celebrating with her friends. Bummer. Another victim of the COVID-19 generation. <laughs> but let's end on a happy note. There will be cake. Thank you for your courage. And I, I'm assuming he's making a cake for us when the, everyone gets together. Yeah. Keep up the great work working from home. Uh, Sir JD. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, shouldn't we call these children uh, Generation C? I don't know. For coronavirus? The, this, uh, this is a very young child, no? To uh, yeah, March, uh, March 21st, 2018. This is two. Yeah, two. Two. So that's Generation C, born under the coronavirus. Born under a bad sign. You, you, you might die. <laughs> Hold on, let me do the sequence. Uh, let me get it for me. Here we go. You, you, you might die. That's true. You've got. <laughs> oh, there you go. I want you to read this one while I get a lozenge. Uh, Albert Aversa from Charles City, Virginia, $223.05. And there's a reason for that because comes a, uh, a night today. Oh. And says as follows, I'm happy as always to make this donation, not only to support you guys and all the producers, but because I'm reasonably sure I will never pay this bill. Hmm. Rusty <laughs> Shackelford, however, is a moderately wealthy man and should be fine. I am way overdue for my nighting, so please dub me Sir 305. And could I also have eggs and eggs at the round table? So it's a double helping of eggs. Quick shout out to Sir Mike, my dad, and Howard F., who I recently hit in the mouth and is loving the show. I'm sure he'd appreciate a douchebag call out. Well, happy to do that. Douchebag. Happy to comply. He asked for a number of jingles. He asked for uh, Trump Space Force, for the Pew Pew, and a little girl yay. And I presume we're going to throw some karma after that. So uh, here you go. Space Force. Pew. You've got karma. He was in for three hundred, uh, two hundred thirty-eight dollars as an associate executive producer. Yes, but he becomes a knight today and wants eggs and eggs. And what he meant by it "won't pay the bill," he feel felt I could, I can say, mm -hmm. he felt as if that the show brought so much value to his life. Ah, I see what you're saying. This lozenge sounds like you're. We got a mouth. You know what the problem? I'm telling you what the problem is with this lozenge. It's it's really sticky and it sticks to my teeth. So when I try to tuck it so I can talk, there I got it. It sticks and it's very annoying. Yes, it's annoying for the listeners as well. It's true. Ah, it's very true. Let me, let me take and remove it for a second. Yeah, maybe you should think about that. I did. I just did it. <laughs> I, I stuck it under the table. Sticks like a champ. This is more like glue. Hey, listen, why don't you chomp on that, and I'll do the next note from Clayton Usher, two twenty two twenty two. Clayton's from Chicago. Long-time listener, first-time donor, so please help remove all this excess douche. You've been de douched you Douche removal complete. I'm donating today in the hopes of starting a trend of finding unique percentages of our slave stipend of 1,200... Uh, what is this? Stipend of 1200 Australian I, or Austrian. I'm not sure it's an umlaut here, so I don't know what this means. A stipend to donate to the best podcast in the universe. I chose to donate 18 ish percent, 18 for Jewish good luck. And I say ish because my Catholic family only recently found out my mother was born out of wedlock and was related to a large Jewish family. Thanks, Ancestry.com, for some added family drama. <laughs> uh, yes. For the last six years, I helped build a small bioengineering company from Louisville, Kentucky, into an international brand. Last year, my, yes, last April, my years of work and a promise of future ownership were rewarded by being let go with zero severance through Skype video, no less. Gotta love technology. I slowly went bankrupt while suckling like a globalist vampire on the jobs karma of fellow producers more fortunate than I. After eight months of vampire, I was hired by a small team of engineers in Chicago where I'd already been living for the past few years. In return, I would like to send out jobs karma for anyone who has hit a rough time during the Rona and can't afford to donate. 
I imagine Pence's jobs karma will work best because he sounds about as dead inside as one feels in between jobs. For me, I require no jingles, but would feel very refreshed to hear one toot from the harmonica. And uh, I think we should still do the the most powerful uh, Nancy jobs karma, but I need a harmonica toot from you. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. We've got karma. Onward with uh, Tristan Onion Martins. Yes. Onion, Mr. Onion. Uh, by the way, uh, Clayton was 222.22. And we have 201.33 out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As a, uh, as a trucker during thousands of miles a week, there's a lot of time to fill with listening to the radio, podcast, uh, books on tape, etc. It's quite different to listen to anything on the radio or the Internet that isn't tainted by the mainstream panic media. Mm-hmm. I just want to thank you for being one of the few out there that is willing to call out the bull crap that the mainstream panic media and all the late night talk shows throw out there. Just a quick shout out to one of my friends uh, that it finally slapped me in the face and pointed me to the no agenda show. I shall call him Mike the shark. So dramatic, so dramatic your read. I'm enjoying it. Onion Tristan, <laughs> Onion Martens. Uh, yeah, it's. I request some 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 uh, goat karma. We've got karma. Apparently, with a twisted mouth harp. Nice. Get that thing going there. Uh, Daniel Mariano is our last on our associate executive produce, producer list, and. Uh, Pflugerville. <laughs> Pfluger, don't, I don't know why Pflugerville. There's nothing funny me about Pflugerville. It's perfectly <laughs> fine. It's not far from here. We I'm like... from, yeah, where are you from, boy? I'm from Pflugerville, Texas. <laughs> it's right What's near, wrong with that? It's right near Fritztown. You got a problem with me being from Pflugerville? Pflugerville. $200. Okay. Dear John and Adam. I like to have an F cancer, a health karma from my ex father in law who is suffering from symptomatic m- what Myelin- my- Mel- melanoma. Oh, is it? Is that mel? No, that's not how melanoma is. It's my- it says myelinoma. That sounds bad. I, I I wouldn't want it. Thanks for everything you guys do. We'll d- gladly give you that. I, I just want to see what it is. My. Myeloma is the way it's pronounced. Myeloma, is that how you pronounce it? M-Y-E-L-O-M-A. Yeah, Yeah. not good. Uh, What is it? It's bad. Oh, okay. Well, it's giving me the F cancer for sure. Feel bad about make karma. Making fun of his town's name now. Pflugerville is off limits for you. You're banned. (laughs) Never be allowed into You're banned forever from Pflugerville. Oh, well. And Fredericksburg, too, while we're at it. What's wrong with Fredericksburg? Fritzburg don't want you no more. Yeah. You know, those Texans are, Texans are that way. Yeah. True. We're armed. And that concludes oh, our it. list that's of that's executive right. producers, associate executive producers for show 1230. Yes. And that... we continue our quest for the truth. Yes. And, uh, and man. get condemned the... for it. I had to block some guy on Twitter. Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting condemned for all types of things. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we're we're discuss- condemned for discussing out of bounds topics. Yeah. It's interesting how uh I don't know if these people actually listen, but the way the show is being perceived by some is well, they're all over the map. They first they say it's this, then it's that, then it's no big deal, then it's a hoax, which I don't think we've ever said ever. Uh there's no. a difference between One time, wait. One time you said, do you think it's a hoax? Yeah. (laughs) And I said, no. Right. That's as close as we've come. But when you go through all the, we, we deconstruct, we, we break down the information at hand. We bring in information from our producers and maybe we come to some conclusion. I think today we're still looking at a whole bunch of different ways that this 
could have been created, where it's coming from, but more importantly, how do we get out of it? Is uh, is of I think interest to everybody. But yeah, this is part of the. Uh, it's like uh, not being critical enough of Trump. You know, and people start to freak out. And we've got to talk about some of this media action as well. But first, again, thanks to all of the executive producers and associate executive producers. Uh, it's very heartwarming to see this showing on a day like this, particularly with things the way they are. Uh, so thank you very much. And we look forward to thanking more producers who supported the show in our second donation segment. And a reminder that we'll be here uh, come hell or high water or whatever Rona throws at, uh, throws at us on Sunday. And we'll do it all over again with more deconstruction. You can support us by going to Dvorak.org slash N-A. And remember, don't try these theories at home, people. <laughs> Our formula is this. We got killed. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. You've got mail. Shut up, slave. I wanted to play a little uh, compilage clip uh, because it's so easy to forget. I mean, gosh, what was happening three, four weeks ago? I don't remember what the hell we were talking about. But for sure, the media is completely convinced that Trump has killed people, uh, killed people by not uh, responding quickly enough. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably worth playing this little ditty from Nancy Pelosi. She was on with Pooper. And in the beginning of this, you'll hear her talking. Well, I'll point it out as uh, as we go. Um, well, here's Pooper and uh, Pelosi. Pooper and Pelosi. Now, NBC must see Friday TV. The, the president's denials of the seriousness of the virus in the beginning was deadly, that it cost lives. The president and the Senate Majority Leader are now suggesting that impeachment distracted the president from responding to the virus do you buy that at all i like this because it's very interesting that the first move uh the united states made uh, as everyone on stage would say at the direction of the president i decided to get up this morning and then we decided to block china from coming and that was the day after he was told which was in the middle of his impeachment trial so I don't think he was distracted, and I don't know where this quote from Anderson Pooper comes from, but Nancy responds. I think uh, that's an admission that perhaps the president and the majority leader cannot handle the job. Uh, we have a life and death situation in our country, and they should not try to hide beside, behind an excuse for why they did not take action. But it does admit that they did not take action. Isn't that interesting how that immediately got twisted around? So someone says something to Anderson Pooper. And then all of a sudden, no, they admit they didn't take action. And 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 what's she going to do about it? But let, that's for an after-action review uh, down the road right now. Yeah, that's for action later down the road. We're going to try and impeach him again for not using the uh, Defense Production Act properly. Uh, we have to work together to get the job done. And all of the statistics that we are hearing break every one of those deaths. Every All of that loss of life is tragic for our country. Uh, to see the big numbers, though, uh, we have to see what we can do uh, to stop that growth of that number of people dying. And so yesterday, we spent the day, uh, our Democratic members on the phone all day, communing with each other, with the press, uh, with everyone we could to say, Mr. President, implement uh, the Defense Production Act uh, because our men and women, our first responders, our health care providers, our TSA, everyone who comes in contact uh, with uh, is administering to the needs of people who are sick or potentially uh, infected uh, deserves our help. How can we be worthy of praising them, of praying for them, of thanking them if we are not giving them what they need, the personal protective equipment that they need to do their jobs and the ventilators to save the lives that they are there to save. This is something that regardless of what went before, that we in the here and now have to address. The president can do that uh, by implementing the Defense Production Act. And uh, this is what he will, they will do another investigation. They're going to do a 9-11 style commission. 
uh, also similar to the Warren Commission for the uh, assassination of JFK, uh, a 9-11 style uh, commission where they will be looking at uh, all of the failures of President Trump and how many people died because of him, because he would not evoke the uh, Defense Production Act, which, of course, he has used. Uh, sparingly, as far as I know, only to threaten General Motors who were price gouging those a-holes, or at least they were holding out for a better price. And um, this is the narrative. Trump killed people by not acting quickly enough and by communicating to the American people that it was nothing, it's not dangerous. He is responsible for killing people, killing them by misinforming them on television. So let's listen to the media starting January 31st through March 14th. People are like, you know, I think I have the flu. Could it be the coronavirus? Overall, most people should not be terribly concerned about it. You definitely want to pay attention. Should they panic? No, Americans do not need to panic. What I would suggest, however, Mm -hmm. is that Americans take this as a wake-up call for seasonal flu. Flu is a much bigger deal. There's an important context we need to keep this in, and that is that the flu is more deadly. Maybe this is a good opportunity to remind people of that. Such a good reminder. And while there's a lot of fear over this coronavirus, you know, the flu is already widespread in the U.S. and and it really is much more deadly, is it not? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. We're going to have 40 to 60,000 deaths this year in the United States from the influenza, and it's preventable. And there are only 12 confirmed cases of coronavirus here in the States. The risk is low. The risk, however, for the flu is through the roof. Health warning from doctors, why they say people should be more worried about the flu than the coronavirus. Half the people in America do not get a flu shot, and the flu right now is far deadlier. So if you're freaked out at all about the coronavirus, you should be more concerned about the flu. Uh, And there's Pooper himself saying it. Gee, isn't that coincidental? So take this clip. It'll be in the show notes. You can get it from Clips and Docs in the tab at the top. Download it, and make sure you play that for people who keep saying this. Because it's just not true. Everybody well, had the same information. Another opportunity within a couple of weeks to make another clip uh, medley of just the opposite. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, I have, while we're on the cut, we're still talking a little bit about it. We have to, we have to at least discuss this. Mm-hmm. That Joe Biden is now a podcaster. <laughs> did you <coughs> did you get any of Joe's podcast? I only took a little piece of it, but before we play it, I do want to play a Joe Biden clip. Oh, I have a couple myself. That he's been really on the oh, ball. Okay. Well, 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 okay. well, let me play the piece of the podcast I thought was interesting because I, I thought you'd like it. It's only a seven-second snippet. The podcast is really not very good. Uh, it's essentially Joe asking somebody to ask him questions and uh and what and so he brings this guy on he asks him a couple of questions he said what do you think and the guy the question guy just immediately reads from a script and tells all scripted and he says well joe let me ask you questions <laughs> what do you think we should do i'm the expert what do you think we should do <laughs> and so then joe brambles on and they think and if you listen to this seven second clip i want you to see if you can spot the the oops edit oh that's the- done just Smack one? The- <laughs> just one? <laughs> that whole no, show is just, pieced together. This is the, one of the more egregious ones. They guy, a same sound guys, they don't care about Joe, they don't even think they like him, and they edited this thing so it sounds like junk. Ron is an outside advisor to my campaign. He led the Ebola response oh. in President Obama's and my administration in 2014. Jeez, that's two edits in there. This is the oh, first start two? I think there's two. Ron Here. is an outside advisor to my campaign. He led the, that's the first one there. Pain led the Ebola response in prison. That's the second one. They they no. chopped in led the Ebola response. Listen. To my campaign. He led the Ebola response in President Obama's and my- It's completely different cadence. They dropped the whole thing to in my there. campaign. He led the Ebola response in President <laughs> Obama's <laughs> It's like Hi, my name is Bill Gooden. In the Ebola, it's just like it's like a Mad Libs insert. This is this is, and they have to because the guy talks like this normally. I put it slightly differently. What is his responsibility, uh, and what uh, if there was an, an you know allocating uh, responsibility is uh, you know his, I'll let history do that. But yeah, 
So I, I'm a pretty good editor. I couldn't fix that or this one. And in order to avoid that, those very high numbers, we have to do at least several things. One, we have to uh, depend on what the president is going to do right now. <laughs> and first of all, he has to uh, tell, uh, uh, wait till the cases before anything happens. Look, the whole idea is he's got to get in place things that were shortages of. Whoa. <laughs> I could edit that and make it sound good, but it. it, it I I would like to see that. This this particular one, I could probably edit and make it sound good. I could. Try. I would. Maybe we should do an edit challenge one of these days. Okay, I just have to get a different. I have to set it up to do that. In fact, I'll have it set up for the next show because Joe's going to be around. Well, I I do have the one. Of course, talking about flubs, you can read this. this is the Biden clips? This is Biden Kuha, But this and, is not. Yeah. No, okay, I I like, think I heard this one too. And um. Uh, our Secretary of State insisted, and this broke the meeting up basically in terms of our influence, that this be called the Luhan virus. <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, why don't we just put them all together? I mean, it'll just sound like a real interview from Joe. So I yeah, think it's, you uh, read all of them. Yeah, here we go. And. Um, uh, our Secretary of State insisted, and this broke the meeting up basically in terms of our influence, that this be called the Luhan virus. Ron is an outside advisor to my campaign. He led the Ebola response in President Obama's and my administration in 2014. I put it slightly differently. What is his responsibility? Uh, and what, uh, if there was an, an, you know, allocating, uh, responsibility is, uh, you know, his, I'll let history do that. But yeah, Joe, we have episode two of the show ready. It's all set. We we edited it together, made you sound good. Yeah, they you have. Know, it's, okay. It sounds just like a Joe Biden uh, discussion with any on any show. There really is no other option for the Democrats than to kill him and, and blame it on on the Rona. So I mean, they, they got to do something. I he has denigrated. To a degree where he cannot get a single talking point out. And he keeps looking down, and that's when he gets confused. He says, oh, yeah, that's what... And then he just throws in some non-sequiturs. He's done. He's toast. He's done for. You say that, but if you follow the, the guys who are, you know, pushing him, they're all behind it. They're, they have not seen this. They don't see it. They're, well, you know, Joe's got some issues, but luckily now, since there's a, the coronavirus, we don't have to worry about a presidential debate, and yeah, he's not going to have to be, there's no showdown in Milwaukee. Yeah. We, he's just, we can waltz it right in, keep, keep him off the air as much as we can. We can edit, do at least podcast is dynamite. The podcast is dynamite. We can edit it, make him sound smart. <laughs> it sounds horrible. The mix is off. They got music under it way too long at the beginning. It's really a piece of crap. And with all the podcasters who are clearly Democrats, who are good, good editors, good, good engineers, good storytellers, NPR people, surely you could have drafted someone to do a better job than this. Let's put it this way. What what if what if the guy doing the job is the absolute best guy in the country? Now, I can't wait for the presidency. Let's I can't wait for Joe's administration to rock my world. Because he picks great winners. <laughs> I, I do have an ISO candidate. I ah. thought I had two, but I only have one. This is, comes from an earlier clip, and is the ISO is called mistake. Okay. That is a mistake. That's not bad. Kind of uh, like it. I don't think I... That is a mistake. I mean, the only... Uh, that's... See, this one's too... This is... Well, this one would fit. Thank you. Your actions are saving lives. It's only two seconds. It would fit. Yeah, you can't hear it. I can't understand a word there. Oh, you know exactly what it says. No. Yeah, this thank you. Your actions have been saving lives. We played it earlier and oh, you understood yeah, it yeah, perfectly. Okay. Well, I know, but when you throw it just bang at me like that, it's very difficult. Thank you. Your actions are saving lives. Man, it's still muddy. Okay. That is a mistake. We can do that one probably. Well, I thought I had a second one on here that was even better, but it's not really looking good. up and down the list, I got nothing. It's not really all that great. Let me see if I have. Uh... No, it's not that great. The other one was better. It was the topper. Yeah. What's this? Uh, that's frightening to me. 
Oh, that's it. Yeah, that was it. That's one of yours? Yeah. Well, I like that one better. Yeah, that was the other one. Where is it? I don't see it on the list. I don't know. I just, uh, oh, it's uh, Frightening ISO. Hello? Frightening yeah. ISO. It's right there. It's on your list. Not on my list. <laughs> it's between example of editing Biden and horizontal rainbow. Which one is that, by the way? Oh, well, play horizontal rainbow. It's just a very interesting. I, okay, I'll, let me preface it. I decided I'm sick of just covering Corona, Corona, Corona for three hours. And I wanted to get some offbeat clips into the mix. In other words, things that were kind of interesting and yeah, we haven't hear about it and make people feel better. And the horizontal rainbow is an example. Seeing a rainbow is typically a pleasant surprise, but a photographer said she was absolutely stunned when she spotted a seemingly horizontal one stretching across Washington's Lake Sammamish, reports IFL Science. Thankfully, she took a picture of it and posted it to Facebook so we can all be amazed. According to the University of California, Santa Barbara, they're called fire rainbows, even though they're not a blaze or even technically a rainbow. It reports they're actually known as circumhorizontal arcs, which occur when the sun is higher than 58 degrees above the horizon and its light passes through high-altitude cirrus clouds made up of hexagonal plate ice crystals, which act as a prism. Well, was it that educational? Jeez, it's, this is more educational. Oh my gosh, it is a double rainbow. I cannot <laughs> believe it. It's a freaking double rainbow. I thought that would be, be something like that. It's a well, horizontal a, rainbow. Have, people should look this up and take a look at the photo. If you ever saw one of these in real life, you'd freak. Mm. Anyway, I mean, it's just the freakiest thing you've ever seen. It's, 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 a, it's almost impossible to describe. <laughs> Okay, well, I, okay, well, wait a minute. I got another one, another good feel-good story. Yeah. This is the Puffin Report. Okay. These are puffins. They've just returned to their home on the Isle of May after spending the last eight months at sea. Some 100,000 of the birds landed back in their native Scotland after spending fall and winter on the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean, where they fed and raised their newborns in more than 40,000 family units. In fact, puffins find a single partner and mate with them for life. David Steele, manager of the Scottish Natural Heritage and Nature Preserve, where the puffins make landfall, said about the migration, they'll meet up with their partner and use the same nest hole, what's called a puffin burrow, and they'll do a bit of spring cleaning meaning if bits of the nest have collapsed, which is a lot like most species of penguins. But don't let their striking resemblance and affinity for seaside homesteads fool you. While puffins are often mistaken for penguins, they're not actually related at all, especially considering their one glaring distinction, puffins can fly and penguins cannot. Now that the puffins have made landfall, the first eggs should start appearing in about three weeks. Okay, so clearly you are you a little bit of cabin fever you're locked in you're watching shitty ass television and uh, you there's an intervention is needed you can't be watching this i mean i did start war and peace the actual television series <laughs> figured this would be nice and long i could probably get through uh, 30 episodes of war and peace but the puffin stuff has got to go all right i got one more i got one more mm -hmm. This is the uh, this and I this irks me because I would have known about this. Then again, I thought twice about it and saying, "Wait a minute, is it possible that these people have been tricked and they've sent ten thousand names to Mars to be picked up by some alien force that's going to come down now and either steal the people or maybe they're going to shoot them? I have no idea." But let's listen to this story. A brand new rover is headed to Mars, and it will carry the names of 10.9 million people, according oh, to NASA. So many people responded to NASA's Send Your Name to Mars campaign that the Red Planet will receive a list of names bigger than the population of Greece. The names are stenciled on three silicon chips. Engineers managed to fit all 10.9 million names on these chips using electron beams. They sit above a piece of art showing Mars, the Earth, and our shared star. Millions of people will be able to see a trace of themselves on Mars, since the silicon chips are positioned within range of the rover's cameras. According to Space.com, the rover is named Perseverance, which comes from a 7th grader who won NASA's naming contest. 155 other essays from students who made the finals are also recorded on the rover's chips. The Perseverance rover is set to land in a Martian crater that used to be flowing with water from a lake and river delta, where NASA hopes to find ancient life. It will also release a helicopter after scout and test out drawing oxygen from the planet's thin atmosphere. This is horrible. What is this drivel you're you're bestowing on us?
This is very educational. Oh, please. It's about some, we, uh, we're we on the moon with the two of these two. Your name, my name. We got one of these chips that's been dropped on the moon, supposedly. What about, what's my name doing on the moon? It was for no agenda. It was You don't even remember this. No, I don't, actually. Yes. Uh, someone sent us up to the moon. <laughs> on the same deal, one of these chip deals. And it's like, okay, you'll be there for whatever. Huh. It's not all that great. You know, there's probably like Adam Curry. There must be like... 10,000 Adam Curry's. There's at least, I know there's probably hundreds of D- D- John Dvorak's. Mm-hmm. So how do they know who it is? Do they have our address? Social security number? Oh, brother. This is dubious. Yes, okay. I, I want to get back to uh, the media and uh, the bull crap. And, uh, and really, I hope that out of all of this comes two things. Social media is, is ineffective. Uh, or it's very effective if you like getting sicker than you already were. And going after Fox News, this is Joy Reid, who now has taken over Trish Regan's spot. Uh, no, she's not taken over her spot. She competes against her, I guess. No, no Trish Regan's her. gone. She was on Joy Fox. Reed took Joy Reid took over Chris she, Matthews' oh, Chris old Matthews, spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. So she's got Chris Matthews' old spot. She brought on uh, some, uh, I guess, a opinion writer from Vanity Fair, Gabriel Sherman. Here's what they were talking about. Yeah, I mean, and to stay with you for a moment, Gabe, I mean, the irony, yeah. Fox News is in New York. It's literally across the street from MSNBC. Yeah. <laughs> it's in Rockefeller Plaza. It's not in, yeah. they are in the middle of it with all of the other New Yorkers. Uh, we saw Trish yeah. Regan, who had a show on Fox Business, yeah. come out and essentially just label it all a fraud. She's yeah. now no longer there. I don't know what happened with her show, but I guess it's not airing anymore. You've had Fox anchors who are going yeah. to, are as likely as anyone who's on this yeah. panel to know someone who gets sick with COVID-19. I just want to get back to the Fox of it all real quick. You know, when I've been talking to Fox insiders over the last few days, there is a real concern inside the network that their early downplaying of the coronavirus actually exposes Fox News to potential legal um, action by viewers who maybe were misled and, and actually have died from this. You know, tr- I've heard that Trish Regan's um, uh, being taken off the air is, you know, reflective of this concern that Fox News is in big trouble by downplaying this virus in the New York Times reported days ago that the Murdoch family was privately taking uh, the coronavirus seriously. The Murdochs, of course, own Fox News, so they were taking personal steps to protect themselves, while anchors like Trish Regan and Sean Hannity were telling viewers that it's a hoax and putting themselves uh, potentially in mortal danger. So I think this is a case where Fox's coverage if it actually winds up being proved that people died because of it, this is a new terrain in terms of being Fox being po- possibly held liable for their actions. Oh, brother. They were just as guilty. We just played a whole, a whole company yeah, live. Uh, exactly but, the but, same but, thing. But beside the point, Trish Regan and Reagan and uh, he never said it was a hoax. They said that the mainstream media coverage is a hoax. Yes, which is always the case. It's not, that's nothing yeah, all, new to us. They do is a hoax. Now, the president took uh, during one of his briefings and the question and answer sessions earlier this week, took time, and, and I'd like to play it just because uh, he does what we normally do is, is show you know, media deconstruction, and he took the time to explain to the CNN journalist why what he was doing is what the president classifies as fake news. The president is still, even though he repeats it several times, I think that he still needs to complete sentences to help people understand what he's saying. Uh, and the way he does that is just by repeating the same, uh, you know, the stop train from Amsterdam to Rotterdam without really filling in all the blanks. But what he's trying to say is, you used a quote of mine, and we and I'd like to talk about headlines with you in a second. You used a, a quote of mine in a headline but only use the first part. And just to give you a head start, because the president is hard to understand sometimes, most of the time, he says, 
I want the governors to be proud of me because then you are showing your appreciation for all the people here working on this FEMA, uh, CDC, FDA, the commercial sector, etc. But of course, they don't do that. So the way CNN played the quote was, Mr. Ego wants you to be appreciative of him. And otherwise, you don't get you don't get helped, which was the gist of the story. So this reporter, and this is a story from a week ago. This reporter stands up, tries to, and they've all done this. Yamish Elsendor is on top of the heap of, you said on March 4th at 3.29 p.m. This was just like the flu. Are you still of that opinion? You know, this kind of bullshit. So here, Trump is, for I think the first and last time, and certainly I'll ever play it, is him explaining to the fake news man how the fake news works. I'd also like to ask you about some comments you made on Friday. Uh, you were talking about governors of different states, and you said, I want them to be appreciative. Uh, you also said, if they don't treat you right, but I, didn't I say don't that. call. I uh, didn't these say are direct, no, direct quotes, a, sir. Excuse me. Ready? 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 Take a look at what I said. I want them to be appreciative of me, okay, and then you cut it off because it's okay. fake news. You and of your administration, Listen, just, absolutely. Please, let me just finish the you just said it again, and you know the answer is a lie. You know the, I could read you your full lie. comments, let, sir, let me just say, look, easier. Your statement and your response and your answer is a lie, because here's the story. You ready? I said, I want you to be appreciative of me, and then you go on, and then I go on, and you cut it off. But it says, you said, because I when you're not... I want them to be appreciative. I don't want them to say things that aren't true. I want them to be appreciative. We've done a great job. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Mike Pence, the task force. I'm talking about Thank FEMA, you. the Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you. But then you went on to say, if they don't treat you right, I don't call. He's a different type of person. I don't call. Said, referring to no, the I don't president. call. So you, you get what they did is they took out the middle bit and they just said, if you're not appreciative of me, I don't call. And now the guy is aware he has the full quote. That's not what they published. And yet he still doesn't seem to understand what was wrong with what they were doing. No, I don't call the governor of well, Washington. Why in this now, time? Of- but Mike Pence calls and the head of FEMA calls. I don't stop them. Did I ever ask you to do anything negative, Mike, to Washington, the state of Washington? Michigan, I love that state. That's well, one of my favorite places in the whole world, Michigan. And I'm so proud of what's happened with the auto industry. It's coming back to Michigan. No, I don't have to call because I'm probably better off not because we don't get he's a failed presidential candidate. He's a nasty person. I don't like the governor of Washington. So you know who calls? I get Mike Pence to call. I get the head of FEMA to call. I get the admiral to call. But what you didn't say, see, you started it off and you talked about, I have to be appreciated. But then when you read the rest, you said, because if you don't appreciate, you're not respecting these incredible people, the two admirals, you're not appreciating FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers who built 2,900 beds in three and a half days, and you're not appreciating all all of the work that's been done, and you're not appreciating these incredible people from private enterprise that are delivering things in numbers that nobody's ever seen. See, and that's why people aren't watching CNN very much anymore. That's why they don't like it. That's why your ratings are no good. Because you even, after knowing the truth for days now, you bring up the old lie. Read the red, the rest of your question, the rest of your statement, you didn't put in. You have to put that in. And it's said in their FEMA, and it's said in their Army Corps of Engineers, because when they disrespect me, they're disrespecting our government. And you know what? I don't mind if I'm disrespected, but they can't disrespect the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA. So I don't think he does a very good job at explaining it. Well, it seems as though the best way to explain that situation is to have rehearsed the explanation, expecting it. Yeah. And in and even better would be to have a chart showing the full statement, showing what they produce, showing yeah. a couple of the headlines and showing what, you know, I can do in the newsletter and I do uh, and then making it very clear cuz trying to explain it just verbally on it's the very fly is difficult, yeah. It's not easy, and he's not, and he's flustered. He flubs. What I see, and, and the guy is a moron. It can't even, you know, the guy is sincere. The reporter, I have to say, and you, I think you may have to agree, the guy is sincere. He just doesn't see it. No, he doesn't actually see it. No, same and, thing with that El Sindor woman. 
she's blind to like anything other than her whatever she well, thinks. She's, well, a de- she's a Democrat uh, activist. She's an activist. She's also activist. on. She's on her. I because I watch C-SPAN. She's on her phone and she's getting pro- questions because it's all live. She's getting questions from home base on the fly as she's going. Ask him this. The fucking orange man. Ask him this. You know that's what's going on. Uh, headlines. Please explain how headlines are created, who does them, and why they do them, because that is the most damaging part of the news industry. And I'm talking about print in particular, but yeah. but online, uh, and everybody does it. What is the point, and why is it dangerous, if at all? You would know because you understand how headlines happen. Well, headlines are written by the editors, not by the writers. Thank you. Ninety percent of the time, not always. Writers can put a headline on there, and if it's a real gem, the editors will let it go. But generally speaking, the editors like to feel that they're doing something, and so they'll look over some copy, and then they'll write a headline for it, and they'll put it on there, and then the writer gets blamed. Oh, that writer! <laughs> when in fact, it's the it's the editor who ninety percent of the time writes the headline so and that can be done and if so if the writer hates trump he'll take something out of context or just make something up or put something there that's jazzy and gets your attention the the thinking is is that the editors know more about how to get attention and the writers know more about how to you know do the reporting and the editors can then edit their reporting and then get some attention uh, by putting a nice headline on there. And that's pretty much the way it's done in newspapers and magazines. And on websites, I don't know the general policy. It's If websites have editors, uh, yeah, obviously the editor will have a shot at it. <laughs> but most of the time on really low-end places, which is not CNN, uh, you would just do it yourself and post it. Right. Well, what's sad is that a lot of these headlines are so deceptive that it actually screams the opposite of what's in the article or draws your attention oh, often, to often draws your attention and, to an outrageous point, but the truth is underneath lo, you know below the fold and many of the writers and uh, that are out there that are trying to be objective uh complain bitterly about even if they want to write something that's maybe complimentary or or or, or just report what happened mm. they find a lot of their stories are killed this the editing uh, class of this country that is the uh the stooges the democrats the uh uh agent provocateurs i don't know what you want to call them advertising there but it's that's the class of people that is that's causing the problem more than the more than the writers themselves the writers cater to them of course because you're not going to get in the paper or wherever you're doing. I mean, this is all dead. Mm. I mean, at some point, and I think your point earlier that this is because of the advertising. These guys, ironically, are killing themselves because <laughs> they can't. The, that's the best part. <laughs> they can't get. You know, they have to do this, but the same because they want to ruin Trump, and at the same time, they're ruining themselves. And it's just it's backfiring. Everything they're doing is backfiring. It, it might be better if they just did the opposite. Well, I hope, yes, yes, and and where most of these are propagated is on Twitter. I would say Twitter is the main place to get your, your headline circulating. A good Twitter, a good tweet with the, right, with the right words will get you lots of clicks. Yep. Lots and lots of clicks, but it's just, yeah, ironic is, uh, is, is really the only descriptor of it. That through all of this blocking and blacklisting, and by the way, for so, who gave Google and Twitter and, and and all these other jamokes the idea that they know everything about coronavirus and therefore they are the arbiters of truth? Who, who, who made them? Who made them the boss? And they and we know it's coordinated. They've all agreed to coordinate this. Yeah, it's beyond me. Well, people should stop using them. This is the time. Go to noagendasocial.com. This is the time to get off of it because it's it's not helpful and it's not healthy. Oh, it's, it's you can just see it. You can see especially if you if you veer uh, which is hard to do on no agenda social. And by veer I mean you all of a sudden let's go look at Rob Reiner's feed. <laughs> And Rami Reiner, his, his <laughs> yeah, yeah, daughter. Yeah. What I like about No Agenda Social is people have have spats and disputes and flames, 
but it always peters out. It goes, because there's no algo that's jamming it in everybody's face. Oh, look at this. There's a fight over here. Look at this. <laughs> look at this thread. Oh, unroll the thread. Oh, my God. Look at this. Outrageous. I'm going to show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fab. And we, whoa. Uh-oh. What dropped? Something fell over. Glass of water. Oh, is it everywhere? Well, it's not everywhere. It's on the floor. Do you need a moment? I need, well, I need a moment to get more water, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's go with this. The dog will lick it up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Russ, we have a few people to thank for show 1230. Uh, and it's not, is it 1230? Yeah, 1230. No, no, no. It's quarter to 12. Uh, huh. David Davidson, uh, Russell Davidson is at the top of the list in Fort Collins, Colorado. It came out with $133, followed by DC Girl, uh, not a spook, uh, $100. She calls herself not a spook. Well, it's because I said she was a spook, and now she has to make sure that she always says she's not a spook, because she's not a spook. She's just a Which fine producer. Which makes it seem she's a spook. And uh, DC Girl, uh, along with, I think, is it DC Girl? And they're po- there's all kinds of jobs, you know, for dudes and named Ben, Dudette's name, Bernadette, uh there's tons of jobs, and she's helping them. There's, she's posting them on No Agenda Social. So if you want to... Well, good for her. Yeah, it's good stuff. She's trying to make up for good lost time. Sure. Some dude named Satesh. Is that right? In Locust Grove, Virginia? Huh. $100. Please call me some dude named Satesh. And this is my second donation. So please de-douche me. <laughs> You've been de-douched. He wants us to think about the elections in Guyana. We'll, we'll work on it. Randall Myers in um, Manassas, Virginia, another Virginian, $100. Uh, Sir Fact Base. Sir Fact Base. In Houston, Texas, $100. Joseph Van Dorp, $100. That came in as a check. Rene, oh, oh, Rene Labe, yes, in Santa Monica. Uh, came in with, uh, yeah, she's uh, one of our old supporters at, uh, or one of our long supporters. Yeah. Oh, Sir Linesman of the Net, Raleigh Hawk in Anna, Illinois, 8118. T Wood, 7777. By the way, he says this is an aunt, this is the Cuomo, Governor Cuomo donation. Uh, it's a Pierce Nipple donation. Eighty one eighteen. <laughs> I would type I think is well found well well thought through. It does look like nipple bars, doesn't it? Very good. Thank you, Sir Lyman of the Net. Funny. Yeah, well we got we got we got yeah, we got every sort of free thinker that listens to this show. Uh T Wood and uh Granitesville, South Carolina, seventy seven seventy seven. Well, I gotta stop here for a second. Help it says I see help, so I gotta stop. I asked for jobs karma twice before, not mentioned first time, no karma played second, lost the job I had interviewed for, but another job pending, help, help, help. So I'm not sure if it was under donation level or we screwed up, I'm not taking any risks. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. And we'll throw in a goat. You got karma. All right. If we messed it up, I want to make sure that that's right. Yeah, well, you, that should have fixed it. I think so. We we do fix things. People should note that. Yeah. So we may may mess up a couple of times. So we got Nate in Sebastopol, California, sixty nine, sixty nine. Ellen, is it Ellen? You think, I think it's Ellen? Uh, Aline, 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 Andrew, I believe. Yes. Uh, sixty four dollars. I'm having trouble reading today. Sergeant Portal. Do you want me to yeah. do it? No, no, I'm, I'm going to struggle. The Sergeant Postal. Postal. Okay, sixty thirty three. Yeah, I got the sun in my eyes. Yeah, let me I'm... let me do it. Come on, let me do let, let, let me do it once for once. If you got the sun in your eyes. Read yeah. along. See if I need to stop. Sergeant Postal, Miami Lakes, sixty dollars and thirty three cents. Uh, Chad Long from Mill Hall, Pennsylvania, six oh oh sixty and six. Small and boob. It is a small boob, and my cousin and co-worker hit me in the mouth two years ago. This is my first donation. Please de-douche me. You've been de-douched. Thank you, Chad. 
Gabriel Shabazian, San Francisco, California, $60. Thank you. Dame Jamie. Yes, Dame Jamie, we got your name right this time. And uh, Dame Jamie has a lot of things here. Let me see. Uh, Sending an F COVID. I don't think I got that, but anyway. My brother-in-law, Fire Department of New York EMS, Joe Mazella, has COVID-19. After 10 days of being miserable, he was transported to Danbury Hospital and admitted for treatment of pneumonia. That's what it does. His poor wife is isolated at home and a three-year-old and two-month-old by herself after taking care of them since last Monday. Um... I did not get an F COVID jingle, but I'll look for it and we'll we'll definitely play it on Sunday. But yeah, so this is where you get the EMS guys and gals that are on the front lines and they can easily contract anything. And it sounds like he got uh, the L strain, especially being in uh, in New York. So we thank him for his courage. And thank you, Dame Jamie. Uh, Sir Robert Bruckner, 5555. Well, uh, Dame Jamie is 5820. What did I say? He didn't say anything. Oh, f- okay, 5820. Sir Robert Bruckner, 5555, Gilbert, Arizona. Christopher Rutger, Rutger, 50, double nickels on dime, 5510. Thanks for the sanity. Hoping for a long donation segment tomorrow, and it's not as long as anyone would like. Sir Lafalot from Mater, Mater, Louisiana. Metairie. Metairie. Yeah. Oh, isn't that odd? I read it as Metairie. Yeah. Metairie. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pronounced Metairie down there. Uh, thank you for maintaining your high standards while everyone is lowering theirs to virtue signal. Yes, good point. My son, Ben, a knight in waiting, and I appreciate all the hard work. Uh, and he's a ham, KC5DDY, and I say 73s from K5ACC. Laura Wilson, also double nickels on the dime from Sammamish, Washington. Love me some no agenda. Working hard to get the Gen Z kids listening. Good luck. Harry Pilgrim, Pilgrim from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Double nickels on the dime. Harry, good to hear from you. The longtime listener and supporter. Aaron Newberry, 5333, Aurora, Colorado. Eric Hochul uh, from Deutschland. Uh, Eric, $52, has been supporting the show for many, many years. So appreciated. Sir Sean DeSantis, Knight of the Northern, Northern Everglades, $50.33. That is Sir Sean to you, yes. Sir Patrick Comer, Baron, Sir Patrick Comer, San Diego, California. The rest are all $50. Uh, Michael Janoski in Lindora, Pennsylvania. Stefan or Stephen Jacobson, I think it's Stefan in this case, uh, from Liverpool in the Merseyside, Great Britain, uh, $50. Jeremy Cartwright, Rockford, Illinois. Andrew Oxenham from Knoxville, Tennessee, Stephanie Sprague, 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 uh, parts unknown. And she is on the on the road to damehood, she said. Oh, she's standed, stranded in Chicago. And we hope you get out of there. Gummy Nerds, Viscount of the Troll Room from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, Christopher Flynn from Oakdale, uh, Connecticut. And winding up with Bradley Ledden with uh, $50. Sir Brett Farrell from Oklahoma City. Sir Brian Watson from Raleigh, North Carolina. Francisco Tejeda in Cibolo, 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 Texas. Greg Morrow, Inc. in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And Ichi Kitagawa in San Francisco, California. Everyone else is under $50. Uh, see some 49.99s there who wish to remain anonymous. And that's when the 33s and the 11s and the 20s kick in for our subscriptions. Thank you all very much. I want to thank all of these donors uh, for what they have done for the show and supporting it today this is where you got to wrap up with something john since we switched roles. Ah, yes <laughs> yes we want to we do want to thank everyone do we have a lot of people that have subscriptions and other uh, contribute all sorts of different ways i want to add one mm-hmm. to this thing which is a uh, should be a 200 hundred dollar donation i want to put him in as associate executive producer but i'm not going to account for it because it's sent kind of a he sent two of these, so I assume one of them is supposed to go to you, even though they're both packaged differently. It's a very small coin from the Royal Mint. Yes. And it's made it's a very small silver coin. It's not really a big coin, but they 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 are they seem to be selling them. And this is Jason Zeisler in Renner, South Dakota. He sent two of these coins and they celebrates the Brexit. The Royal Oh Mint really? Has, oh that's nice. Has put out a coin with Queen Elizabeth. It says it's fifty pence. Is a fifty pence silver coin, <laughs> yes. even though it's cost a hundred dollars. Huh. So, and so we're make, we're adding him as a uh, I'll make him associate executive producer. Give him credit for two hundred dollars, and he can add it to his accounting. 
Okay, but we to, we'll put him in the credits then as well? Yeah, we'll put him in the credits as an associate okay. executive. Let me just write it down then because, you know, otherwise these things we forget. Well, I, I'd remember as we produced it later. Yeah, but sure, it, yes, sure. Jason, yeah, sure. I would. I do. Sure, sure. I don't remember all that. I never forget. I'm like an elephant. Okay. Thank you all, everybody. That was. Uh, just appreciate it. I love that uh, our model is hanging together. We're all helping each other. We're all producing the show, and we're continuing. And we look a hell of a lot better than mainstream all of a sudden. Isn't that amazing how that works? Thank you. And for all who needed some uh, jobs, karma. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You stop. Karma. And remember, you can support us for Sunday show by going to Dvorak.org. Slash N A. Yeah, today is the second of April, twenty twenty. Here's your birthday list. Sir J D says happy birthday to Dane Phenomenus. 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 As he celebrates today, Lou Stemler says happy birthday to his smoking hot sweetheart Sarah Wilson. She turned sixty today. It is his birthday today as well, apparently. And Sir Chris Wilson says happy birthday to Kylie the Keeper, who'll be celebrating all on her own uh, Saturday, fourth of April, and that is from Sir Felix and Sir Chris Wilson. Happy birthday from everybody here at the best podcast in the universe. It's One upgrade in the title department today. Dame Love and Light moves up to a level of Baroness, and she'll become Baroness Love and Light with the Protectorate of Hobson's Bay, and that is Melbourne, Australia. Congratulations. Thank you for your additional support in of $1,000 to the best podcast in the universe, and enjoy that, and we'll have that reflected in all peerage maps, itm.am uh, slash peerage or dvorak.org slash peerage dot a, uh, itm, no, htm, something like that. Uh, and then we have one night and uh, one Dane to take care of today, which is always exciting. We have the round table ready. Nice. Are you ready? I'm. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm ready now. Here's the sword. Yeah, very good. Here, let me, oh, shoot. I dropped. Here it. Oh, there's mine. We can keep this gag going forever. Up here on the podium, please, Al Aversa and Kimberly Redmond, both of you are supportive of the No Agenda Show in the amount of $1,000 or more. That means you can take place here at the coveted round table of the No Agenda Knights and Dames. Very happy and proud to pronounce the Kate the Sir 305 and Dame Kimberly Redmond. Knight and Dame of the No Agenda Round Table. For you, we have hookers and blow, rent boys and Chardonnay, eggs with eggs. Uh, we've got Dame Elise's Limoncello and Salmon Diet Soda and Video Games. We've got some red heads and rise up here, some Ruben S. Women and Rosé, some sparkling cider and escort, some ginger ale and gerbils, maybe some uh, breast milk and pablum, or no, no, no. Let's keep it with mutton and mead. That's right. We've got it all at noagendanation.com slash rings for you. Uh, please head over there and make sure you let Eric the Shill know where to send off the ring, and uh, thank you for your courage from everybody here at the No Agenda Show. No Agenda It's like a party, only the parties aren't happening too much, uh, unfortunately. Uh, due to the Rona, there's just not a lot that can be done. However, I do have a belated uh, meetup report from Kansas City. This was held on March 28th. In the morning, no agenda nation. I think this was the dog park, John. That uh, <laughs> Remember the, the people are going to meet yeah. in the dog park. I, I don't know how it turned out. We're about to find out. In the morning, no agenda nation. This is Sir Spencer, Wolf of Kansas City. And this is Dame DeLorean. Thank you for your courage. We are here at the Swope Park, off-leash dog park, because dogs are people, too. Well, this is, of course... Uh, dogs are people, too. You heard it, because you got dog people. Dogs are people, too. And uh, <laughs> it's just us. We've been here for the meetup, so we're still holding it down for the KC meetup. It's happening, despite what government regulations dictate. We're still here for you if you want to meet up. Keep an eye on noagendameetups.com for future KC meetups. And hopefully see you last Saturday of the month next month. So they went dogging by themselves. No one showed up. I feel bad about that. Uh, good, no. good try. And I like. I appreciate the extra editing. 
was interesting. Uh, we did have our first uh, No Agenda video meetup. Video, 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 video. Uh, this is sent to me by producer Mary. Mary says, well, it was pretty good. Pretty good. We had three Americans and a Scandinavia online. This is one for the history books. The first video meetup was a actually a great success. No technology bugs, and we had a stimulating conversation for almost two hours. Subject matters were across the board, starting out with who had been listening to No Agenda the longest. The youngest in the group had been listening since episode 13. A couple of folks were devotees of John C. Dvorak from the PC Mag days. The consensus was to schedule another video meetup, check the calendar, and join from wherever you are. Even John and Adam are welcome to drop in. No excuses, you won't be in town. Next time, I'll try and set up a recording at uh, the end to share an audio report. A closing note was, don't forget to tip your podcaster. Mary, thank you very much for the report. Um, and I think these are scheduled on a regular basis at noagendasocial.com. Uh, it's just posted and everyone jumps in and there's phone call, phone numbers to dial into and video or audio. Um, it's very ad hoc. Uh, although some of these, I guess, are being scheduled at noagendameetups.com. So check there to see if it can be a little more uh, organized. And it sounds like it's happening. Then from the back office, uh, just what's happening on the calendar for Friday tomorrow, downtown Dallas. Unknown if this is on or canceled. It was supposed to be a birthday meetup for Sir Paul. Uh, so we do wish him a very happy birthday if nothing else comes to it. Uh, that's supposed to be organized by Sir Paul, the trusted advisor, and Dame G Money. Um, the, hopefully, they'll uh, adjust that on noagendameetups.com. The New York City Saturday meetup postponed. Uh, postponed until in-person meetups can resume. We'd like to schedule a virtual meetup. Defy our overlords. Meet at a public park. Defy our overlords. Meet at our home in Brooklyn. Let us know. <laughs> Fearlessly, Athena, Alex, and the little one. Uh, Winter Park, Florida. Uh, Brandon E, unclear if that's on or not for Saturday, and the worldwide virtual meetup on Saturday. Uh, Shaheen is organizing. Why not grab a beer and some mac and cheese? Enjoy this time with citizens from uh, other from around the world. Uh, thanks to the help of a few dudes named Ben, we will bring we will be meeting on the NA Jitsi server at meetup.jit.c.no slash no agenda. Again, the sure. best to go to noagendameetups.com to get all the details. And when is that? That'll be Saturday. I might even join in for that one if we can. Uh, and uh, then we have Saturday in Brooklyn, backyard, Ralph Avenue in Fulton. I live upstairs and for the time being have a whole backyard to myself. So come by at dusk. <laughs> bring firewood. Bring your own bee and bring your own jams. Ginji or Ginji is the uh, producer of uh, the uh, organizer. So please, everybody, post your update, updates at noagendasocial.com. Uh, I mean, say noagendameetups.com so that we can inform everybody if they're on or not. And especially the video meetups, let's make sure we keep the information up to date. Uh, noagendameetups.com. The No Agenda Meetups, whether they're in person or virtual, they're like a party. Sometimes you want to go hang out with all the nights and days. Just like a party. So I have a uh, clip following up on Laura Logan's new show. Oh, yes, that show where she has no agenda. Yeah, I was thinking about that, by the way, because there's still some old web pages where it says no agenda with. And I was thinking she must be actually pleased that we um, made mention of this through attorneys, because don't you think you'd rather be Adam Curry has no agenda rather than no agenda with? Because that means that means you're expendable. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's a good point so she has to be happy with us yeah because uh, i'm sure the network wouldn't have done it but they they had to do it okay, now now you've actually just brought something up that we've never talked about we don't need to delve into it but we did come to we figured it all out with her is that that the way to put it pretty much okay with the, with her producers it's not her she doesn't yeah. quite even know right but uh they probably actually 
kind of gas. I bet you they gaslighted her. So, you know, Laura, we think it's because should be changed the name because you should be in front. Your, your name should be at the top. <laughs> That's exactly. I, <laughs> I bet I, you they I, did. I give her a little more credit. I think she's very smart and she knows exactly what's going on. And she well, and she probably went. I, I, she probably knows about no agenda. I think well, she, maybe because we have does. highlighted her a few times. Yeah, but, I think she does. but meanwhile, I've got the teaser from her first show, which is oh. about Mexican cartels. And it's not so much that I wanted, you know, people don't do these things. They go to Mexico and they get a bullet shot at them and then they leave. But there was a there's a tidbit of information in here that I think the millennials should be paying very careful attention to at the end. Human smuggling and trap now a global multi-billion dollar industry that the Mexican cartels have added to their criminal portfolio, along with money laundering, extortion, oil theft from pipelines, and control of the multi-billion dollar avocado industry. <laughs> You're supporting drug cartels by eating avocado toast. Who knew? <laughs> well, that's the best piece of information from the entire show. <laughs> if it was a clip that I could, well, you know what? Screw it. What am I saying? It is a good clip. You're good for it. Clip of the day. You're good for it. Dynamite. Saved it to the end, too. Well done. Yeah, well, I got also have just to get it out of the way. I got the Rachel Man. Now everybody took and produced this oh, thing yeah. a different every, every, way. Everybody's got this one. I'm everybody sure. made a version of this because Rachel Maddow again made a fool of herself because within a couple of days of Trump saying he's going to send some hospital ship to New York, it showed up. But no, nah, you know, Rachel wasn't ta having any of it, and here we go. The president said when he announced that those ships would be put into action against the COVID-19 epidemic, he said one of those ships would be operational in New York Harbor by next week. That's nonsense. It will not be there next week. And the naval hospital ship, the USNS Comfort, you see it right there on your screen, has just docked in New York City. The ship will be used to house non-coronavirus patients, and that in itself will free up uh, the city's hospital care to focus primarily on those with the virus. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo will brief media there at the top of the hour. We're going to bring that to you live as soon as that gets underway. NBC's Rahima. Yeah. Same source, NBC. I mean, I'm now wondering because there's a bunch of these things coming up with her. If they're if they're setting her up, hmm. I, I don't believe she writes all this stuff for her own show. It's too much work. I I, I watched her. I mean, I, I I pretty much will sample everything every night. You know, so I'm looking at, uh, of course, the Cuomo kid and see if he's still alive. Um. And Maddow is just—is he sheltering in place? Is he yeah, still on the sh is he still sick. on the air? Yeah, he's sick. But he, Chris, he, yeah, he said that he had a uh, hundred and three fever the night before, and but he's still hanging in there. And he and Don Lemon are crying together. Other, yeah. Um, if, if if I had the Rona, I'd continue for as long as I could too. I wouldn't stop. He said I wouldn't make a big deal about it. I'd just do it and shut up about it. Move on. Yeah. But no. Yeah, that's what you do. Good no. Well, uh, they needed to make the big announcement to take the uh, spotlight off the nipple piercings. So now that, has that this? Uh, I I have to say I, I haven't had time to delve into Nipplegate, but uh, is this is this true? Does he have uh, pierced nipples? Is this a thing? Nobody has. There's no denial. Where's the denial? Huh. Cuomo should go on the, on the mic. He's on. He gets on the air every day. And he go on the mic and say, by the way, after we close this hospital, I would like to announce that I do not have nipple piercings. I wear my 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 uh, suspenders under my shirt. That's what he could say. <laughs> okay. So Which, what somebody suggested, by the way. This is a big plus for a presidential run, though, because I looked at the comments and everyone's like, ah, oh, right, cool, kinky, yeah, right, ah, oh, nice. Yeah, I think I made it clear in the uh, in the uh, newsletter that, yeah, that's exactly what people would be saying in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, not so much in uh, <laughs> Omaha. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. We have emergency news. <laughs> We now officially have over 1 million cases of coronavirus. 
yeah, actually, that number's been it's been going back and forth since yesterday. I heard a million then too. Well, it just happened now, according to the troll room. Uh, sure. Well, but we all know how it works. Yes. Uh, uh, but but let's get back to Rachel Maddow. You think she's being set up? That's interesting. Well, it may be because she's she's losing her numbers uh, after she's been losing her numbers consistently. Well, you know what she's doing wrong. She still has a studio-like environment. She should go home. She needs to go home, do it in the closet or when you know whatever looks right. Well, she's been out of the closet for some time. And see, that was such an open door. It's, it didn't even crack a smile for me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. But when somebody throws me a softball, I have to hit it. Uh, I was referring more to me being in the cludio, a closet yeah, studio. Yeah, no, I got the joke. Now, I, you have to assume that there's people like the, the Joy Reads and some of these other people don't like Rachel because she lords it over everybody over there. Her numbers are down. And you've been in these environments. People are the, the people in, especially this third tier of broadcasting. They're very, you know, they're aggressive at, at getting rid of someone so they can take their place, and the, you know they want to move up. And I mean, that's how what happened to Chris Matthews. He got ousted. He's an old man. Let's get rid of him and put Joy Reid in. And, you know, she's probably been working it. Oh, the whole yeah. thing is, oh, yeah. is creepy. Yeah, there's so, probably a lot of creepy stuff going on at, at NBC in general. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we have to alert the affiliates who are probably pissed off because we're running well, way, I have way one, past I have one more report slot. you want to play. Yeah, I do. actual news in. I do. Can I guess which one it is? Yeah, try. UBI on PBS cutoff. I can play that, but that's not what I was going to okay, play. Okay, what were you going to play? I wanted to play, contrast the PBS... Uh, report on the Houthis and what's going on in Saudi Arabia with Saudi Arabia with the uh, with an actual report from Al Jazeera. OK, that's good. Some news deconstruction to play us out. So let's start with the piss poor report, an 18 second report. This is all the effort that PBS has. And the Saudi led coalition fighting in Yemen says Houthi rebels. This, have attacked is this the Saudi- piss poor report? Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Here, it was coincidentally also 17 seconds long. Uh, here we go, 18 seconds. Saudi Arabia is being accused of torture and other crimes against civilians in Yemen. Human Rights Watch reports that Saudi military forces and their Yemeni allies have committed a long series of abuses. The Saudis are backing the Yemeni government against Shiite rebels who are allied with Iran. That's it. That's the one that talks about the Shiite rebels. We played this clip about a, a few yeah, weeks ago. Yeah. Shiite rebels never mentions Houthis, doesn't give us any background, doesn't do, do anything. So in that same amount of time, I have first I have the short version of the report from Al Jazeera. This is the Houthis attack Saudis. This is the same 17 seconds you were that would play that. And the Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen says Houthi rebels have attacked Saudi Arabia. The coalition says the kingdom's air defense systems intercepted two ballistic missiles targeting Riyadh and the southern city of Jizan on Saturday. People living in the capital say they heard at least three explosions. So now there are, apparently there's missile attacks going on. We're talking about the Houthis. I mean, PBS gave us none of this, so let's play. Let's continue with the with Al Jazeera and play the extended report, so we actually now know something. Witnesses in Riyadh said they heard three explosions and the sirens of emergency vehicles in the north of the city. Rebels have frequently launched missiles from Yemen into Saudi Arabia, retaliation for its involvement in Yemen's now five year civil war. The last strike on Riyadh was in June 2018. Another Houthi attack took out two major oil installations last September that nearly halved Saudi oil output. This one was only two missiles, and this is why I believe that all of this is a PR stunt from the Houthis to appear stronger than they actually are. Fighting has intensified recently, with the Houthis expanding their territory by taking control of Al Jof province near the Saudi border and looking to advance on the oil-rich province of Marib, where there's been fierce fighting in recent weeks. They are uh, running um, hard and fast right now, so I think it's it's very clear to me, at any rate, that these will have come from the Houthis. This is a, a message, if you will, to the Saudis that... You are vulnerable to us, 
and uh, we have the capability to hit you uh, pretty well anywhere we would choose. Yemen is enduring one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. Millions are without enough food or medical supplies. Just this week, the UN tried to convince warring factions to implement terms of a ceasefire agreement signed in Stockholm two years ago, saying a ceasefire is all the more necessary during the...